Hi everyone and welcome back to my second live that is uh, very much looked forward to because in between after my first live I received so many messages that so many people were waiting uh, for me to do these live sessions. However, um, in the last live there were not many people who attended the live. I want to encourage people who want to ask me live questions. I am specifically doing this live session so that you can ask me live questions and I can answer your questions live. So uh, please make sure that uh, you are making a note. I am going to do the live every month to start with. I might increase it later, but for now, I have kept the frequency to uh, every month one live. Um, and I urge all the people who are wanting to talk to me live to attend the live sessions. That's the first thing. Uh, secondly, a lot of people had put some questions uh, under this uh, video link asking me some questions three, four days back. But somehow, for some reason, I am not able to see those questions uh, in the chat box. So they have just disappeared. So anybody who uh, is attending right now and if you had asked any question to me um, in this chat box, please make sure that you again, please ask me the question. Maybe from the next time, um, we will find some another way. Probably you can send me a mail prior to the live or you can directly join the live and ask me the question live to avoid this disappearance of uh, these questions. I hope um, everybody is uh, able to see me because I'm not able to um, check whether anybody is uh, watching me or not. I mean, I'm having some numbers over here, but uh, just uh, put a message in a chat box uh, to confirm that you are able to see me and the stream is uh, there live properly. Anybody that can confirm me that? Mm, okay. So I would start with uh, first question today. Uh, somebody is asking me, um, it is said, only when I uh, you get detached, uh, then it is said that only when you are detached from your twin flame, your twin flame starts coming towards you. So how is it possible to detach? And I think uh, this is a very important question. So thank you for asking this question. The, I see a lot of twin flame coaches. Uh, saying this that please detach your twin flame you have to detach only then they will come but somehow I find it very conflicting and very contradictory and why I feel it conflicting I am going to explain first is that if you are on this journey most of the people are struggling to accept this journey first of all in a very serious way most of the people have not really gone into the full acceptance of accepting this journey 100%. So when it comes to the lesson of detachment, I think if you haven't even accepted this journey 100%, there is no question of you detaching from it because you haven't even accepted it as yours. You are somewhere emotionally, mentally, not really willing to accept that path somewhere or that connection. You are kind of in the state of running. So when you are in the state of running, you cannot technically detach from that person because you are already running from it. You can detach fully from something where you are completely taking the ownership of that person, that connection, that experience. Only then you will be able to learn the lesson of detachment. So I feel there are a lot of people who are getting into this confusion that how I can detach from my twin flame because uh, they are not yet uh, they have not learned initial lessons in the journey. So it's like, you know, you are actually a primary school student, but you are wanting to take admission in university. So that is what is the scenario that looks 
when somebody is trying to detach from their twin flame, when they themselves are in some sort of a non-acceptance or some sort of a state of running in this connection. So it's not for you. You don't have to force yourself to detach from your twin flame. First, you need to work on the acceptance of this connection and the seriousness, your seriousness that you are on this spiritual journey. This is the first thing that I want to say. Second thing, very important, which is pretty much conflicting, that so many people are saying that it is said that your twin flame comes back to you only when you detach from your twin flame. And that is why I want to detach from my twin flame. That means you are having some sort of expectation in your heart that your twin flame should come back to you. So there is an expect expectation. Naturally, along with that expectation, there is an attachment. You have that attachment for your twin flame. That is why you want your twin flame to come back. And for them to come back to you, you want to detach from them. You understand the conflict here. You are wanting to detach with your attachment. That cannot ever happen. So it is not of use to rush your detachment. Let the detachment come naturally. As you start spiritually progressing, that detachment will naturally happen. You don't have to force it. You don't have to decide that I want my twin flame to come back and that is why I would detach from my twin flame. That is not something that will actually go in a right direction. So I hope I have resolved that confusion. Then um, the second question from the same person is that um, I'm keeping myself busy with my job and activities, but that does not stop me from loving my twin flame. Obviously, it's love. So uh, you will feel that love for your twin flame all the time. Working on something and trying to distract your mind, whatever you are trying to distract when you are doing your chores or your daily activities or routines, you are engaging your mind into those activities. But what about your soul? Your soul is still there intact, right? Your soul is not probably indulging in those activities. It is your mind that is trying to run from the whole situation. So your soul is obviously in love with your twin flame and that love you will always feel from your heart or from your soul. So um, understand that, that what is coming from where. It is very important for us to understand what exact emotion is coming from where. So this, uh, this willingness of you uh, wanting to engage yourself in certain activity is coming from your ego mind. And that love that you feel for your twin flame is coming from your soul. Both these things are true, but you can't mix these things with each other. Engaging your mind is not going to sort uh, the love you feel in your soul, right? Uh, so it is good to engage yourself sometimes, but don't expect that your engagement is going to sort this feeling of love from in your heart. That love is always going to be there. Um, then you said that remembering him, watching uh, him uh, on uh, WhatsApp or watching his pictures, uh, his DPs, uh, it, does that really amount to chasing? So here, another most important thing I want to say uh, when it comes to this question that uh, whatever I'm feeling for my twin flame, whatever emotional burst outs or uh, the kind of remembrance I'm having in my heart, is it really chasing? So I want to say that it is not really chasing. It is uh, coming to you, this whole feeling and longing because that third energy in this twin flame connection is active. You are going to feel their energy and their presence. And it is all about you accepting that. Mo the most important and first most lesson in this spiritual journey is that are you accepting this connection and are you letting that energy of this connection flow uh, without any hindrance in your life. The moment you accept that with grace, I think most of your uh, struggle in your uh, to and fro that you are trying to do will start diminishing. So first thing is that you accept that you are feeling your twin flame. There is nothing wrong in accepting that energy and accepting that you are feeling them. There is nothing wrong if you really feel this urge to see their picture. Sometimes with my own experience, I would say that when I was at that juncture where I used to feel like uh, seeing the picture of my twin flame, 
so many times only looking at the picture of my twin flame smiling in that picture has healed me in so many ways his face will just uplift me by every uh, mean uh, it will put me into a completely different vibration so uh, many people are uh, you know taking this whole act of uh, looking at the picture of their twin flame in a very negative way because everybody says that oh this is chasing don't stalk don't do this yes that's also true too much of a obsessive behavior also doesn't do any good but if you really feel that urge and if you see their picture sometime you are not committing any crime there is nothing wrong in doing that in fact it can also boost your energies in many many ways so just accept whatever it is and be with it um then when it comes to uh, this whole idea that am i really chasing my twin flame i uh, really want to say this i think i have also said this in another video of mine is that um, try and get rid of these labels chasing and running don't indulge too much into these labels because the moment you start telling yourself these stories that i am chasing and i'm not supposed to chase this is coming from your ego mind your ego mind is trying to rationalize everything and trying to put label on every damn experience that you're going through so you first of all put label onto yourself that i am a chaser then you your ego starts telling you that you don't need to be a chaser you don't want to be a chaser and then you start getting so confused about what exactly you are supposed to do and you forget to follow what your soul is telling you you forget to follow what your heart is telling you so keep these labels away for some time if you are finding this urge in your heart that you feel like contacting your twin flame or you feel like seeing the picture of your twin flame do it because that also is a form of surrender surrender is going with the flow are you going with the flow whatever flow your heart is taking you through are you going with the flow if your ego mind is coming again and again in between and trying to tell you that don't do this don't do that you are not in the state of surrender till the time you are completely flowing in the flow so uh, following your heart and in some way pursuing your connection with a with your twin flame it doesn't matter you don't have to put the label of chaser runner over there because it confuses many times all that you need to make sure in your mind is that you are going with the flow and you are following with the heart that's the only thing that you need to do so that is what i have to say so that's the second question then i have got another question that um, after going through all the stages of twin flame journey i have come into full acceptance of this journey after so long my twin flame is still in silence what is the final conclusion to it because it is natural to have expectation for reuniting i completely understand because i know who this who this person is who has asked this question uh, that person has really been patient and has been really really working uh, well on himself i know that uh, somewhere i feel that uh, this per particular question that you are asking like what is the final conclusion to it um, i feel that you are kind of rushing uh to conclude right i know that it has been pretty long you have been on this journey so obviously it's natural for you to be in the expectancy of some connection some contact from your twin flame but i feel that you don't have to right now conclude anything as such your journey is still unfolding there is something definitely surely happening in some way and as you said that no uh, you recently tried to contact your twin flame after 2 years i think you have to wait and watch about uh, what happens and uh, how that silence is going to break it might not break immediately but uh, i have seen that you have not uh, left any stone unturned in your journey you have done whatever it takes uh, for you to go on in this journey so somewhere i feel that probably this could be one of your soul lessons right now that don't conclude because again when you are trying to conclude your ego mind is coming in between again and again and uh, trying to tell you that oh it has to be uh, giving you some result you know some conclusion so oh, this journey wouldn't go with that direction so don't conclude right now anything 
some junctures of this journey will taste you in many ways. And probably this is one part of your soul lesson. If you want, you can even update me personally about what was your experience after you uh, contacted your twin flame after two years. And probably I would uh, be able to throw some more light on your situation. So that's about that question. Then um, somebody has asked me, what do you do if your twin flame is your boss? Um, I have come across so many people who are in this situation where they meet their twin flame at a workplace and that scenario is absolutely um, confusing or very complicated because you are in the official environment, you can't um, override certain protocols and you have to be in a certain decorum. On top of it, your twin flame happens to be your boss. So you can imagine the kind of triggers or the kind of very complex situations that will arise around you when you are uh, in that sort of a scenario. Um, according to my observation, through whatever uh, case studies I have got through my sessions, like what sort of scenarios people are going through, especially this boss and subordinate kind of a connection between twin flames, I feel that uh, there is a very specific reason why you specifically chose that setting for your journey. And in such scenarios, there will be very, very heavy sort of a triggering that would happen uh, here. So uh, there is a certain reason why you have chosen such heavy triggers, because if you are working in same office, then every now and then every small decision, every small call, uh, every smallest conversation between you and your boss might trigger you or might make confusing scenarios. Uh, or anything, anything that we can't even think of. Anything can happen at every minute. So it's very heavy. The whole uh, setup of triggers that you have chosen for yourself is pretty heavy. And uh, there is nothing right or wrong about it. I think there is a specific reason why you have chosen that specific scenario, especially connected to the office environment. Like there is something where some things will definitely limit you and you will have to work into your own constructive uh, uh, con congested parameters to work out your soul lesson. So understand that there is a reason why that scenario is there. Most of your lessons may be coming from uh, major lessons when it comes to self-worth, uh, judgment, judging others, judging yourself, judging your twin flames or judging the situations or the scenario. So very, very close soul lessons that uh, are related to the judgment. Uh, societal challenges, like how the society thinks and treats uh, different people in different situations, especially in a corporate environment. Uh, most of your soul lessons are related to those uh, which you have to learn into your soul journey. And I think once you are done with this particular phase, there will be a lot of changes that will happen in your journey. Either you will move out of that job or your boss will move out or your locations might change or your roles might change. Some change will happen there. You are not anymore facing each other the way uh, you were facing each other initially. And uh, you will understand how, how you... I mean, as you progress, you would be able to start connecting the uh, dots that uh, why certain thing happened at what juncture of your life uh two things i want to say all those for all those people who are having their twin flames in their office environment most of them are struggling whether they really need to be in this job or not so they want to move on some people can't move on because of certain situations so even if they are trying to move out they can't so understand that there is some sort of a divine intervention there that you are supposed to be at that place to receive all these triggers so if you are there and if you are not able to move out of that office, it's absolutely okay. You have to somewhere accept and acknowledge that it is something which is very much uh, wanted or needed for your journey. And when that is done, I think you will already like you will automatically move out of that situation. So just you have to be patient and see how those things unfold in your journey. So I hope that uh, kind of gives you your answer. 
then um then there is another question uh, that will there be an episode of longing once you have surrendered uh, sometimes it feels like mini episode of dark night um yes i mean i definitely want to say that um surrender does not mean that everything is coming to an end and your longing is over surrender is a process so when you are willing to surrender and surrender is also a lifestyle it's also a skill the way we have bath every day you have to practice the state of surrender almost every day so it's not an event that oh today you decided that you will surrender and you surrendered for the rest of your life it doesn't happen that way you will uh, have to uh, practice surrender on every day basis and it will fluctuate so today probably you are really in a state of surrender tomorrow you may not really feel like that you may get into the chasers uh, phase again uh, till you are really progressing well on your journey you won't be really getting to a place where you are in the state of surrender naturally most of your time in your life it takes time to be at that place so first of all you have to be very patient with yourself when you are practicing surrender because it doesn't happen overnight that's first thing because you are fluctuating between chasing and surrender or not being in balance and being in surrender it's very natural that you will have this longing feeling again and again every now and then or sometimes uh, in the process of being into the state of surrender and that is completely okay um ultimately what is surrender going with the flow so whatever you are experiencing whatever you are going through just accept that acknowledge that and go with the flow you don't have to control it because the moment you start controlling it you are snapping out of the state of surrender so be in the surrender whatever comes your way just observe it and let it flow naturally in your life that is what i would say um then it feels like mini episodes of dark night yes it would feel like uh, mini episodes of dark night because you are also into the purging process you are also uh, processing a lot of uh, toxicity dense energy uh, from your energy body so there will be a lot of up and downs energetically happening inside you when you are practicing the state of surrender and that's completely okay you just need to keep observing yourself and uh, noting down uh in your mind that what what is it that you are going through so uh that's one thing another thing is you were also asking about the longing longing also is a part of third energy longing also helps you to keep up with this spiritual journey if you are not feeling this longing you will become like a normal person who eats popcorns in front of tv every evening and there is nothing else you want to do the longing for your twin flame is keeping you out of your comfort zone which makes you a seeker that that is what that makes you um, go on this spiritual path to find solace to find comfort so uh, that longing feeling is the carrot that your divine is showing you to progress further so that feeling is going to be there even when you are in the state of surrender you have to understand that and you have to accept that but as you progress in your spiritual journey you won't have a lot of issue in uh, acknowledging that longing feeling it won't be as painful as it might be right now for you so that is what i have to say for that question then um somebody is asking what are you going to conduct in your twin flame retreat that is happening in dubai in april uh, okay that's like a different question but i want to briefly answer that um, it's a very curated kind of a retreat uh, first time we decided to do only for twin flames because lot of people were wanting to connect with each other physically because all of us are connecting to each other on a social media and nothing is happening physically so a lot of people were feeling that we need to connect with each other in a physical way and uh, 
try and experience and share and learn from each other in the physical way. So that was the main idea behind the retreat. And I don't want to disclose everything, but there are a lot of things. Like there are a lot of tools, a uh, lot of activities, a lot of discussions, sharing, Q&A, a uh, lot of experiential things or uh, different type of tools. So when uh, anybody who is going to attend the retreat, when you walk away from this retreat, you will be completely shifted probably into a different zone. Uh, how far that only you can decide uh, you will definitely be having some direction to look forward to your further journey you will feel more balanced more more healed and you will be connected to an absolute amazing uh, soul tribe after that because you will connect with so many of them and I think those connections will stay for a lifetime so that is what uh, one would expect from the retreat that is happening so that uh, that's one thing I had to say then um, I want to check all the chats because so far I was reading all the questions which I had received through my email I'm just uh, going through your uh, questions. Uh, Valentina is asking, is physical experience the most challenging once in alignment spiritually and energetically everyday interaction with your twin flame uh, path to walk for growth, money, independence and authentic self? Um, yes, I would agree with you, Valentina, that uh, the physical experience is the most uh, challenging experience because uh, it involves your ego mind, right? So uh, physically, uh, the way you deal with your twin flame is completely different than how you are dealing with your twin flame in the energetic zone or in the spiritual zone. So dealing with their higher self is a completely different ballgame than how you deal with them physically. So um, even when you are completely in harmony with your twin flame energetically, your physical uh, presence and your physical interaction could be definitely challenging for you because you haven't probably still got in alignment with each other on a mental plane or on an emotional plane. So that those challenges will come even after being in harmony energetically with your twin uh, flame. Then um, somebody is saying, you have mentioned in one of your Quora responses that sometimes in this journey, one feels like death is better than living. Can you elaborate? Also, how was your journey after your spiritual awakening in 2011? Uh, yes, I had mentioned that, that death is better than living. I think it was one of my dark night of the soul where I was so down in every aspect of my life. My husband got to know about my twin flame connection. So naturally he was upset. Now he understands everything. But when that whole thing hit him, he was absolutely uh, uh, upset. He felt that I betrayed him in whatever way. So... Uh, Somehow I, I just lost that whole faith or trust I had from my husband. I was already having this guilt feeling because my daughter was four year old when I went through this awakening. So I had this huge guilt that I'm not becoming a good mom. I'm not paying the required attention to my daughter. My brother stopped talking to me. Suddenly, these realizations started coming to me that people who I considered I belong to or they belong to me, everything was kind of collapsing in my life. My career started collapsing. I lost a lot of money. So from every aspect, literally every aspect in my life, I was getting into minor. And then my whole faith in God, faith in myself, faith in being good to others, everything was challenged. And I was so much into the dark darkest dark phase of my life uh, one of the hardest dark nights I would say so I, I have been suicidal in those days where I used to feel that there is no meaning to this life 
there is nothing in this life nothing there is no meaning to love faith any emotions being good to others there is no meaning to anything so um i i used to feel that death is better than living so that was kind of my dark night i would say and as you are asking how was my journey after my spiritual awakening in 2011 this whatever i explained to you that was the first hit uh, in 2011 so i went through that dark night almost for um two years at least and then later it again hit in 2016 so after 2011 i think it has been a complete roller coaster for me not being able to understand what the hell is happening multiple dark nights different types of dark nights with different types of intensity however at the same time my twin flame journey was also progressing so even when all these bad things were happening which really put me into a big darkness there was definitely some sort of a silver line to the cloud or uh, to my experience because uh, my twin flame was connecting and disconnecting with me at the absolute right time when i really needed and uh, somehow i started developing this whole understanding like okay whatever i am going through is bigger than what i am understanding or it is not normal there is something mystical to my experience i started realizing that and rest is the history i mean i can keep talking about this experience for days so i want to move on to the next question now um somebody is asking how to activate root chakra um first thing you need to understand is you don't have to activate your root chakra if you are a twin flame and if you have encountered your twin flame if you have recognized your twin flame your heart activation has already happened and if your heart activation has happened that means your kundalini has spontaneously awakened so this is a misconception that you have to activate your chakras if you are on a spiritual journey your kundalini will spontaneously activate this is a different timeline we are talking of like if you look at the ancient timelines where the ascended masters used to take their their disciples to himalayas or some mountains to activate them that was a different timeline many people were not uh, most of the people were not spiritually aware awakened and they were not supposed to be awakened today in the current timeline every third person you meet is awakening our dna strands have different uh, material in it we are naturally and spontaneously awakening and we don't have to deliberately do anything to activate our chakras they are spontaneously activating so don't worry about uh, you know intentionally activating your root chakra it's probably already activated um then somebody is saying um ma'am please talk on root chakra i am facing issue with it is collectively people facing them yes yes rahul uh when it comes to root chakra i think uh, last 3 months especially not last 3 months actually from november from november december jan i have uh, specifically observed that lot of people collectively processing root chakra issues there has been a lot of root chakra healing that has uh, uh, erupted on the surface and many people have been clearing their root chakra from november december and jan february it shifted to uh, some sort of anxiety to heart center basically heart and uh, throat but uh, november december january were completely about root chakra so yes your query is right most of the people are collectively processing uh, root chakra uh, you are facing issues about your root chakra you can send me a message about what issues you are facing i can definitely tell you because there are many things i can talk about when it comes to root chakra issues so what exactly you are facing depending upon that i can tell you um somebody is asking can i dream of becoming successful and follow my passion if i am on a twin flame journey absolutely why not why what makes you doubt that that is what my question is because uh, somewhere i feel that as you uh, whether you are a twin flame or not if you are spiritually awakening you start becoming a natural manifester 
you don't even need to put too much of attention to it whatever you are um, imagining you will have a natural ability to manifest it and uh, you dreaming about becoming successful and follow your passion is absolutely there there is one gray area over there that as you are on a twin flame journey it may happen that you are starting to have your ego death so if your ego is wanting to be successful and if your soul path is not there you might start going completely deviating into a different path and your whole desire to be successful the way you used to uh, dream about might not remain the same i can give you my own example i used to have my own company and i used to have this dream that i want to make it the best company in dubai i had a design and branding agency and i used to work so hard to make that company be an amazing company but as my spiritual awakening started somehow i started realizing that that is not my soul path my soul path is something else so i naturally uh, deviated from it and i started doing something else but it was very natural so if it happens to you you won't feel bad in fact you will feel more and more clear about what is it that you want to do so don't worry about uh, where you will lead or what you would do so far if you are having any aspiration in your heart just follow it of course you are able to fulfill whatever you want to so that is something i had to say can you put some light on being a celebrity twin flame and other one is a non celebrity i have seen a lot of examples like that where one twin flame is a celebrity and another is a non celebrity uh, mostly uh, the person who is a non celebrity is the aware one though i do have a couple of people who are celebrities of course i can't take their names but they are twin flames and their uh, twin flame is the unawakened one and non celebrity i have met those people but i think their scenario is very similar to any other twin flame but the person who is having a twin flame who is a celebrity that is becoming a real challenge because they can't reach out to that person uh, you know the, everything is very limited but somehow i feel that uh, there are enough and more divine interventions even when you have a celebrity twin flame most of the stories which i have heard from people who have celebrity twin flames uh, they have gone through the same challenges the way any other person would go uh, however they have also gone through some sort of a personal interaction with their celebrity twin flame either some um, exchange of message or they just bumped into them or Uh, some sort of a encounter happened from the stage to the audience or something like that so uh, that that i feel is one of the major elements that you will have amazing spirit guidance and lot of dreams if you have a celebrity twin flame and uh, some or the other way your personal interaction also will unfold with that celebrity twin flame even when it doesn't sound to be feasible practically it will happen most of the stories i have encountered uh, even though the twin flame is a celebrity they how they somehow they have interacted with their uh, twin flame personally and something which is pretty unusual that has happened in their connections so i hope that is what you were asking me uh, uh but otherwise the connection and the journey and the triggers and everything is the same there is not no difference only because uh, they are a celebrity twin flame it is just that their setup is different than uh, the other people but every people uh, like every twin flame uh, story is in a different setup so um, i would consider celebrity twin flame connection is just one type of another setup in the journey there is nothing else that is too different in this whole thing then uh, somebody has asked me three questions and they are like uh, do narcissists have demonic attachments i got feedback from some tantric that i was under some ritualistic attack uh, how to protect myself and my twin from this when the narcissist is constantly attacking us how do i regularly clear these psychic attacks and negative energy felt in my energetic connection to my twin flame 
from this narcissistic third party during ascension. I almost feel a demonic presence. Uh, my crown chakra opened a few months back and I feel deeply connected to my twin flame energetically. My twin flame is struggling with a narcissistic third party relationship. How do I sanitize from the negative energy field? Um, I feel there are many people who go through such negative attacks. And I feel there are two reasons to it. One is that there is some sort of a very heavy karma that you are dealing with. Uh, and whatever you are dealing with is kind of also helping you to clear your karma. Uh, the demonic attacks will happen only when there is a very, he very heavy karmic energy in your energetic field. So probably these uh, demonic experiences that you are going through uh, are probably, if you really want to see it in a positive way, they are probably helping you to uh, release your karmic bond with somebody, probably this narcissist who is heavily attached to you. However, I definitely want to suggest you to do an Akashic record reading from a very good Akashic record reader. Uh, it is not necessary that the person needs to understand to inflame dynamic. If they do, it is better. But if not, it's okay. Because uh, Akashic record is a healing modality where you can actually figure out if there is any sort of a negative hook that is attached to your energy body. And if it is there, uh, you can remove that hook through Akashic record reading. So once you remove it, after that, you can take whatever protection uh, majors that you want to but removing that hook that is there in your energy field is the most important thing so probably this whole twin flame experience is bringing this issue on the surface in your life so don't consider that as a negative experience because every experience you go through in this connection will bring up something that is pending in your karmic deals so probably this whole connection is making you aware that there is some sort of an energetic hook that is there in your energy body that you need to release. Uh, according to my understanding, there could be other modalities as well, but Akashic record reading is a good modality to uh, look into this particular factor. Um, you are having regular psychic attacks. I can also uh, recommend you to uh, speak to Ela. I had taken her interview in one of my Empower Hour sessions. She is somebody who has really gone through it all. She has dealt with thousands of energies attacking her at once. Uh, you know, she and her daughter and they have really gone through a lot of turmoil and they have successfully come out of all these psychic attacks and negative energies and they know <clears throat> very well about how to deal with these energies. So if you want, I can connect you with Ela. You can speak to her and she can really tell you what exactly you need to do when it comes to um, protecting yourself with the psychic attack and all these negative energies. You can also read Ela's book. Uh, it's called From the Spirits to Spirituality, how she navigated this whole demonic experience for almost six, eight months in her life towards her spiritual ascension. It's an amazing book. Everybody who has been going through the psychic negative energy attacks should read her book. And uh, if you want to consult her, you should consult her because I think she's the best person around who is a twin flame who has already ascended, who has already connected to her masters and who has gone through everything possible that can happen in the negative entity attack. So, uh, if you want, please get in touch with me. I will connect you to Ela. So that's the answer to that question. Uh, then uh, somebody is asking me, my twin flame is with third party and they come in my dream. What is the purpose if they have already destroyed my 3D life? Uh, why do they do it? What is the purpose of coming again and again in my dreams? after certain period of in intervals okay so there are two things over here first is that you need to understand that twin flame dreams are not random if some dream or your uh, twin flame is coming in your dream again and again that means there is something that you need to pick from that dream there is some clue that has been given to you from your spirit guides 
so it's not that you have to inflame as a human being is choosing to come to your dream and uh, poke you or harass you or annoy you or disturb you that's not the thing your spirit guides are showing you the twin flame dreams because you know, the twin flame is your spiritual partner that person is that, that person's higher self is facilitating your spiritual journey so they will come in your dream to show you what you need to work on so if they are coming again and again in your dream that means there is something that you need to pay attention to and they will show you exactly what it is so when they are appearing again and again with the third party okay somewhere it is kind of trying to tell you that you have to release this whole resentment anger jealousy hatred whatever you may be having for that third party third party situations uh, will arise in a twin flame connection when you are dealing with uh, insecurity um, you know, self worth uh, this subconscious belief system that uh, to receive love from uh, your romantic partner you really need to work hard there is a lot of uh, insecurity when it comes to uh, having some competition uh, with you like this third party so third party presence means you have to release all these issues related to your insecurity uh, self worth and all these things and even the hatred and jealousy for the other person uh, who is involved in as a third party so you have to stop hating that person start seeing that third party as somebody who has who is probably helping both of you you and your twin flame to go through a certain soul lesson and learn that lesson that person is also on a soul level aware of your journey and that person is there to either make you understand something and release something important so that you start vibrating higher or there is some sort of a karmic contract uh, of that person with your twin flame so they have to clear that karmic contract with each other right so there is no point in you blaming any of them nobody has destroyed your life in any way if your twin flame chose to be with somebody else it was a part of their soul plan it was about their karmic contract are you able to accept that are you able to understand the higher purpose of, of why it is happening uh, and uh, able to move on uh, in a positive way by accepting that my twin flame has chosen some another karmic partner in their life for whatever xyz reason um you need to come into your own acceptance and you can still hold that amazing love for your twin flame because this is unconditional right uh, which relationship status you are in or which relationship status your twin flame is ideally it should not depend what what and how you feel for your twin flame so that is what is about learning a lot of uh, spiritual lessons on this journey so note that you are seeing the dream for a reason it is coming again and again because you are not picking the clue that's why it is again coming so start paying keen attention to your dreams uh, don't resent uh, your twin flame or the third party start understanding why they are coming and what is it that they are trying to show you in your dream that is what you need to focus on then the other question is how to deal if uh, your twin flame destroys your physical world completely and married to someone to prove your twin flame socially disrespectful or uh, to everyone uh, gossiping all third parties energies and destroy life i think i just answered this question in a different way so i think you must have already got the answer somebody is asking how to stop oscillating energetically or after separation from your twin flame i don't care about not having him any more but sometimes my body aches for that energy um your energy is going to and fro between you and your twin flame because that is what is supposed to happen once your heart center is activated your energies are completely imbalanced so that until your energies come into alignment come into their own harmony this to and fro is going to happen so instead of you asking how to stop stop it you need to ask how to deal with it how to understand it because you can't stop it 
you encountered them that heart center activation happened so that energetic dynamic will take place now so instead of trying to stop it because it is not in our control energy is the law of physics <laughs> it's it's just science if uh, you are standing in front of each other and already activated and if you are not in alignment it you will repel from each other and that to and fro will keep happening so how to handle it is by acknowledging that you are on this path you have to have come into some sort of acceptance to that understanding that this journey is energetic in nature and there is this energy into play and the more you come into balance day by day it will start harmonizing with the other so you have to work on all these things uh, you have to question all these things are you running from anything are you accepting this journey are you accepting your twin flame the way they are are you accepting uh, the divine and the kind of lessons that that are being given to you and uh, being in the mood of a seeker that i want to introspect and i want to figure out what exactly is triggering me and i want to work on those factors so that i start becoming into my own balance if you are doing those things those energies will automatically start balancing and once they balance you will not face this to and fro so much then you will definitely start aligning with your twin flame so that is where you need to focus instead of asking how to stop uh, that to and fro because that is not going to help so i hope i uh, answered that then uh, there are some more questions that are also coming here lot of questions part of the journey is accepting its natural progression through you if they come back cool if they don't cool you are your own twin flame your twin flame is you uh disregard the other body yeah that's absolutely true however you don't even have to disregard the other body you can hold the same consciousness by regarding the other body as well <laughs> so uh don't get into any sort of a disregard you can uh, absolutely respect the other person with a smile and hold the same uh, understanding at the same time um during the dark night of the soul when there when there is hollowness void in heart chakra how do i feel in union and still feel void at the same time um you would not feel that because when you are heart chakra is purging or healing or uh, some sort of a recalibration is happening in that whole healing process the feeling of union may not come at that particular thing you will definitely feel as if you are going through some sort of a dark night so uh, you understand my point right when you are actually digging deep into the ground at that same time you can't fill the water inside it right you have to first <laughs> dig the ground completely put the cement so that it is completely covered and then put the water into it so um, when your heart is digging deeper uh, you know figuring out what is the dirt where is the dirt and taking the dirt out from that particular place you will not feel in union at that time don't expect to feel in union at that time uh is it true that the universe heals your certain wounds with time example i used to feel abandoned by my twin flame because he wasn't messaging me in spite of being online obviously i was expecting his message every day i think it is half truth i won't really say that um universe heals your certain wounds with a uh, time yes in some way yes because why i would say yes because as you grow you are also maturing as a soul so your maturity level increases some where you learn to let go or you start understanding the other person's point of view and somewhere at a soul level you are able to understand it you are you are able to empathize with another person or you understand that it was not so much uh, to keep to your heart and you are easily able to let go so with time these things can happen but there are also some things which are just buried deep down in your energy body you forget about it or the intensity of the emotion of hurt or anger or whatever you went through 
doesn't surface up but it is there it is deep re rooted somewhere in in your deep in your energy body so i won't say all the wounds would heal with time there are certain wounds which you bury down and you pretend that you have forgotten but they are there so yeah it's i would say it is half truth um then sapna is asking hi ma'am last time i told you that i have asked my twin not to text or call uh, till we are on the same page just after 25 days he texted me wishing me on my birthday on 7th march and my birthday is on 11th this is a very uh, a positive sign sapna because uh, you know i think uh, he really was eager to <laughs> send you a message and even before your birthday he messaged you like 3 4 days earlier uh, just to say happy birthday to you so just accept that and acknowledge it as a positive sign i have also experienced the same um my birthday is on 14th march that was yesterday and uh, in one of the years my twin flame messaged me happy birthday on 8th march uh and then he himself said that oh sorry uh, i sent this message by mistake i will uh, message you on 14th so um, i know exactly where he was coming from and uh, he he really wanted to express that happy birthday wishing in some or the other way on on 8th march i don't know why he couldn't stop and wait till my actual birthday arrived but he wished me on 8 march so i think you also experienced the same thing it's okay i also gave him thanks on on 8th as well and i was equally happy on 8 march because he wished me on my birthday so that's that's a very good thing um then uh, ramya krishnan is saying uh, thanks for speaking against labeling some of my twin flame friends advised me keeping a template in mind it gets difficult to address my confusion with a template yes i i feel that template can help you to certain extent i am not saying that template doesn't help you uh, to structure your experience or to make sense out of something a template gives you some solace but does that mean that you should always operate from templates no because uh, then you are limiting yourself ultimately the whole uh, twin flame experience is a spiritual awakening journey twin flame experience also is pulling us out of our traditional templates so if we again start templatizing the twin flame experience we are just repeating the same thing with the different label whatever we have templatized as a romantic relationship with soulmates uh, we are doing the same thing in the twin flame connections and we are not here to templatize twin flame experience it's not about template so when i i'm saying that uh, you can templatize little bit of it that means you can go by with this whole structure that something happens with this connection there is some sort of a theory some sort of a concept that is being put forward which helps you to understand the structure that is it you don't need to really ground yourself into that structure and start looking at every damn experience that you are having on this journey from that template because in that case then you are not going to progress so yeah you have to release the template completely whenever you feel it is helping you you can look into it but otherwise it's completely okay to not to have that template over there um then somebody is asking he used to message me every day but but then he stopped messaging me every day i feel abandoned and dejected but over a period of time now he messages once a week or days but i don't feel abandoned it is very clear that you learned your lesson or you overcame that fear of being abandoned you he made you learn that lesson that he was not sending you message so you got those triggers you probably uh, fought over those triggers and you started coming and vibrating at that place where it doesn't really matter to you whether he is messaging you every day or not and somehow you are completely okay with whatever he does and that's a great sign 
you learned that lesson and i think that's the very reason that he again started messaging you Uh, after a separation with my twin flame uh, came back in 2022, I started to see identical twins everywhere, often multiple times in a day, no matter where I went. Uh, when my vision refocused, I held the juice box up to the mirror. The message read, it's fine, use the mirror to check at your lovely grin, but please don't get confused and think you are you have got a win. Can you clarify why I was undergoing this kind of spiritual attack? Um, I think I already talked about spiritual attack. I don't think um, it is a spiritual attack kind of a thing. Probably this message is coming to you to show you something or to make you realize something from your spirit guides that also could be the case but if you are feeling from inside that it was not coming from your spirit guides just ignore it the more you focus it the more it becomes stronger so just ignore that um, we can't really say why you will experience certain spiritual attack there are certain er energies if they see uh, there is a certain uh, way in your au auric field that they can enter they would enter and they would try to or do certain things but I want to say to everybody that don't be afraid of negative attacks or negative entities we also need to hold love for them they also need liberation right so they are stuck somewhere and they are trying to uh, do things uh, from whatever place they are operating from so don't, don't be afraid of them and uh, always trust in your own light that you hold as a soul if you are trusting that light and you are very much well connected with your spirit team nothing can go wrong with you no, nobody can invade you so just keep that in your heart um does the dark night of the soul go away forever after uniting with ourselves uh, most probably yes i mean there are multiple dark nights and those dark nights happen because there is a different type of suppressed energy that is surfacing up and your ego is struggling against it, right? Your ego will not want that energy to come up. So, uh, when you are going through that whole purging process, you will go through dark nights. One, you once you have snapped out of your solar plexus, and if you are starting to uh, operate from your heart center, most of the time your dark nights won't be that severe. If at all any dark night hits you after you start operating from your heart center you will know that the dark night has hit you and you will be able to deal with that dark night in a very mature way uh, because you are already operating from the heart center so the more you progress you are well equipped to deal with your heart uh, with your dark night in a much mature and wiser way so the way you felt in your dark night when it first hit you that severity and the pain that you faced it doesn't remain the same as you progress in your spiritual journey so don't worry about that at all um then there is the how much uh, time has passed i'm just thinking oh okay we are almost one hour so we have to stop we can take the remaining questions some other time but i also have to take this uh, one question uh, somebody is asking me how to strengthen my connection with spirituality in order to give more and receive more and become more aware and create more consciousness I think uh, anybody who is uh, wanting to strengthen the connection uh, with spirituality first and foremost step connection with yourself because you are a spiritual being in the first place and you are connected to the higher realms through your chakra system right so you first reconnecting with yourself many people are finding things outside them they are not trusting themselves they are not trusting their own wisdom they are not trusting their own light they are not trusting anything that is within them so the first and foremost step to strengthen spirituality is strengthening the connection with yourself first uh, even when it comes to your ego mind are you listening to yourself your inner thoughts 
and then it also extends to listening to your higher self so listening to yourself listening to your higher self trusting your higher self um, will help you to strengthen your connection to spirituality naturally you will start having a very strong communication with your higher self your uh, spirit guides uh, most of the people are not able to do it because of the lack of trust they they can't believe that they have they really have in their own self uh, all that what it takes to be um, the uh, enlightened person or the self aware person they are looking outside so stop looking outside start practicing to connect with yourself and it would naturally strengthen uh, your connection with your spirituality you could start probably praying more you could meditate you could start journaling there are enough and more modalities by which you can start strengthening that connection with yourself so if you are not really somebody who likes to meditate or you can't really meditate or you don't know how to meditate there are many other different forms of meditation it's not like you just have to close your eyes and sit somewhere you could go and um, you know uh, uh, walk around in the woods or you do you can do art you can listen to music or uh, find a time to connect with yourself so whether it is through meditation or through writing or through journaling or through painting you can find yourself what is it where you can connect with yourself the most um starting from there uh, you would definitely be able to take it to the next level so that's what i said and uh, another thing is i have also made uh, this video about how to make conscious connection with your higher self and your spirit guide there is one video probably after i close this video i will add the link to that video in the video description uh, you can check that video because it talks about how to differentiate between your ego self and your uh, soul uh, which gives you more clarity in listening to your higher self so if you understand how that is done probably you will be able to connect with yourself more and more more easily so that is something i have to say then i think there are many questions but i am not able to answer those because we have already crossed our timing but i am uh, copying and pasting all these uh, questions that you are listing here i will probably answer those in the next live i hope that's fine so yeah i think uh, hope all these answers i don't know how many questions we took today but i hope this is going to help all of you so i am going to end this now see you in the next live in the month of april i don't know uh, when in april i will conduct the live probably uh, around 15th april exactly after one month because from 28th april we are having this retreat so it's it's better that i do it earlier so yeah see you in the next month bye for now take care all of you